let me take you through some of what we know today. First of all, we know this virus is from a group of viruses that is quite stable. That means they mutate less readily. They're called DNA viruses. The question we really need to ask is could this virus ever mutate in a way that causes evolution so that it could affect our Australian native species? And to help us explore that and understand that better, it's important to make a point, which is that carp are not closely related to our Australian native species at all. They're very distantly related. So it's a stable type of virus, and the species that we're trying to target and kill with this virus is very distantly related, which means the risk of mutation causing evolution so that it could risk these species is too small to measure. Now, what we know from looking at any other viruses that have an ability to move from their natural host to another species or species group is that they universally do so to a very closely related species or species group. Why am I telling you that? We could study catfish really carefully, and if we were confident that they didn't develop the disease caused by this virus, we could be very confident, by extension, that more related species groups don't also. The planned release, I take it that is of the herpes virus, will result in the propagation of an unprecedented number of viral particles in the environment. Should we be worried? Uh, so um, essentially what the authors are questioning is the likelihood of mutation of this virus and the implications if mutation were to occur. There's a couple of components of answering that question. Um, the first is uh, the, the specific nature of this virus. It is, uh, there are different sorts of viruses. Um, uh, RNA viruses, for example, um, uh, by the way they replicate themselves, they're more prone to mutation. And DNA viruses, by comparison, which this carp virus is, are less prone to mutation. Okay, so there is an issue that, that, that there could be an element of truth there, and we'll find out. Uh, well, what I will say is that, of course, all living organisms mutate. The question is how, how often and how significant are those mutations? So this, is, this particular virus, there are around nine strains that have been identified throughout the world that are 98% homologous. That means they, they, there isn't much evidence of, uh, there is no evidence of significant mutation. Uh,
And what I will say is the point that they draw to directly is uh, if there will be lots of virus particles released into Australian waterways, does that increase the risk of mutation? Now, it's very clear looking at international case studies where this virus has caused significant outbreaks uh, and, and kills of common carp, that the outbreaks, are, um, um, they, they, they're episodic, they're, they're fast. And so uh, what I will say is mutation of the likes uh, that the authors refer to um, uh, actually undertake, are undertaken over a period of mill millennia, um, not tens of years like we're proposing in this program.